Hey everyone, welcome to Calvary Online, and my name is James Teichman. I serve as the online and outreach pastor here at Calvary, and we are so excited to be here with you today. If you are new to Calvary Online, or if this is your first time being here with us, we want to encourage you to connect with us at calvary.ch slash guest. This is going to be the best way for us to be able to connect with you, be able to get to know you a little bit better, and how and find out how we can serve you, no matter where you are in your walk with God. Um, so wherever you may find yourself today, we're excited that you're here with us, but I want to give you a little heads up about what about what today is going to look like. And so in just a couple of moments, the band's going to come out to lead us in a time of worship. And then Ryan, a member of our teaching team, is going to be out to bring the word today. And we are in this sermon series right now called Reset. And it's January, right? So maybe you've had some New Year's resolutions that you're sticking to or you're trying to go and attain some new goals this year. And so because this is kind of like, you know, a cultural time where we look back and kind of see what really is important, we want to do this series called Reset, where the purpose is that we're refocusing on what matters most when it comes into our spiritual walk. And so that's what we're doing today. We hope that you're encouraged by it and challenged by it. And at the end of today's service, we're going to have the opportunity to take communion together as a church family. And so here at Calvary, we use some of the traditional communion elements, but no matter where you are, where you may find yourself this, uh, find yourself today, we want to encourage you just to use whatever is around you. And so here you might be seeing someone comment um, in the chat right now, no matter what platform you're on, feel free to introduce yourself, say hi, say maybe where you're watching from, say hi to someone you know, maybe someone you don't know. We are a platform that exists to live in love like Jesus. And so that's what we want to do today. We want to encourage each other. And so connect with someone this morning and, and just let them know that you're thinking about them. And so that's what we have for you today. And it's going to be a great one. So let's get it started right now. Good morning, everyone. We're welcoming to Calvary today. So glad you're here, man. We believe this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice, be glad in it, turn our eyes towards him, see what he has for us today. Glad you're here. Let's sing together. Sing that again. 
beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our Put your hands together like this one. Oh, we look to the sun. That's right, let's keep that going. Oh, we look to the sun. Set our eyes on the Savior. See the image of love. Sing His praises forever. Jesus, and we turn our eyes towards him, trust in what he has for us, that there's hope because he is living, he's living, his spirit is here today. Amen. Days may be darkest, but your light is greater, you light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, well, you're rising higher with power to save, with power to save. You keep hope alive. You keep hope alive from the beginning to end. Your word never fails. You keep hope alive because you are alive. Jesus, you are
Jesus, because you are alive, man, we have hope. We have hope for this day, God, for the breath that you have given to us, we thank you. And we want to return it to you as praise. God, would you open our eyes to see you today? Would you, God, give us ears to hear your voice? God, hearts that are ready to receive from your word today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can take a seat. Our mission is to live and love like Jesus. One way we do this is by giving one extra dollar to help those in our community know and feel the love of Christ. We call this One for One. Last week, our offering went to a man who has been dealing with pancreatic cancer. It has been a very difficult year for him with chemo and radiation treatments. Because of your generosity, here's what we were able to bless him with. This week's One for One was nominated by a member of Calvary Shadow Lake for a woman who's going through a difficult time. A few years ago, her husband was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and he is failing at an aggressive rate. She is unable to place him into a care facility as they are not accepting new patients at this time. This means she needs to stay at home with him and they are struggling financially with no income. Our dollars will go to support this couple as they navigate a new reality and show them that there is a God who loves and cares for them. Thank you for giving to the One for One. Because we give, we get the opportunity to impact the lives of people in our community. Well, hey, Calvary, how are we doing today? Doing all right? Yeah, yeah? few of you here at Bellevue South are doing great. I want to welcome those of you joining us online. I hope that you're having a great day today. Those of you joining us across the street at Bellevue North, I hope you're having an incredible day as well. And then those joining us at Shadow Lake, I hope you're uh, just enjoying some time there at Shadow Lake as well. Uh, it is a joy and an honor to be with you uh, again today. I, I love the fact that we get a chance to gather together uh, as a church, whether that's online or in person, to spend some time in his word. Uh, but before we jump too far into his word, I want to take a second and I want to address a couple quick things, if that's all right with you. Is that cool with you? Cool. You guys are cool with that. All right. So first things first, uh, we've talked about Rooted the last few weeks. Uh, what Rooted is, is it's a 12-week uh, study or experience for us to spend time in God's Word with other people, and it's an incredible, incredible experience. I've been through it a number of times. Uh, our staff has been through it. We would love to invite you to participate in that. And so if you have yet to register for it, it's very, very simple. Calvary.ch slash Rooted uh, is incredibly simple to, to register for that. Uh, we've got online as well as in-person so I want to invite you uh, to experience that. Today is the last day to get registered for that. It starts up next week. So uh, be sure to get registered if you've yet to register for that. What's that called again? Rooted. Rooted. Thanks, Bellevue South. You guys are good to go. Uh, second thing that I want to address today uh, is that I'm not Scott Beckenhauer. How many of you were like, I can see that? Anybody? Yeah. Um, so Scott, last week, him and I sat on stools and we talked about Rooted. And then he said he, I was going to preach and then he was going to preach this coming week, which is today. Well, uh, in my message last week, I said that I turned my phone off on Fridays. You remember this? I said, I turn my phone off on Fridays because I want to uh, be fully engaged with my family. I want to be fully engaged with my wife and with my kids. And so on Fridays, my phone is off. This Friday, uh, I got a text message from, from Aaron Acey, our executive pastor, and it just said this, call me when you get this. And I didn't get it because my phone was off. And so uh, my wife also got a text and she got a call. And so my wife came to me a, a couple hours after she got it because she didn't know she had it either. She came to me and she said, hey, Ryan, Aaron wants you to call him. Now, that can only mean a couple of things, right? It's Friday. I've told everyone my phone is off. I said it in front of thousands of people last week. So obviously my boss knows this. And so uh, he would assume that it must be something crazy. And so he said, hey, uh, would you call me? So I called him back and he said, hey, here's the deal. Uh, Scott doesn't have a voice. Uh, once or twice a year, Scott goes through a, a season where he just doesn't have a voice. And I think it's probably from yelling so much. He yells all the time, guys. It's all positivity always. You're so awesome. No, uh, no he goes through a, a bout or two a year where he just loses his voice and he's just unable. And so next week, next week, I promise, Scott Beckenhauer, our lead pastor, will be preaching. You guys excited about that? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. He's going to preach a message next week uh, called How to Love Yourself. And so it's going to be an incredible, incredible message. I, I want to pray for him, but I also want to pray uh, for the Yonker family today. Uh, the Yonker family, uh, I, I want to just lift up my, my, my condolences to you guys today. Just uh, Mark Yonker has been a part of Calvary for so, so long, and he passed away this past week. And so we are, uh, we are saddened by that, but we want you guys to know the Yonker family. We want you guys to know that we love you guys tremendously. We're coming alongside you guys as best we possibly can. So please uh, reach out to us for anything we can do for you. So I want to pray for that, and then for Scott, and then we'll jump in. Cool? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for uh, just the opportunity we have today to, to look into your word. And Father, I, I pray for Scott as, as his voice comes back this week that you would just continue to, to build him back in. And God, I pray for the Yonker family, that, that we might be a church that would come around them and alongside them in the midst of, of all of the pain that they're going through, God, that we could come alongside them as a church and show them love and grace and mercy, extend hands of, of comfort to them, perhaps some meals. But God, I pray that you would just uh, surround that family with your love. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Well, we're in this series called Reset, and every time I hear the word reset, I go back to my childhood. My childhood, when I played Nintendo games. Now, when I played Nintendo games, here's the truth. I wasn't very good at Nintendo games. And so this reset button was actually uh, in my favor in a lot of ways. I would be taking on a boss in a game, and I'd realize I'm going to lose against this boss. And so quickly, I hit that reset button as fast as I possibly can so that I go right back to where I was in the game. That's the way it works. And so you you play this game, you're about ready to lose, and so you hit the reset button to start over to go all the way way back, but as the game's loading back up, you start thinking about all the things you did wrong. I did this wrong, and I did this wrong, and I did this wrong, I didn't attack this way, and so if I do all of those things the correct way, then this reset will actually help me as I move forward in this game. In the same way, that's what we're doing in this series. That maybe for the last year, maybe for the last couple of years, we've been going down the wrong trajectory of our life, many of us. And if we could just simply hit a reset and say, you know what, this is most important. Here's an area that I've dropped. Here's an area that I've neglected. Here's an area I don't think about anymore or focus on anymore. And so if I just hit the reset button and start all over back where I was, then maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to go in the right direction with this. And so we started the year off by talking about this love of God's word. And we said, if we could just uh, make God's word the thing that we rally around and love God's word, then it will change the trajectory of our life. And then we talked about this love for God. And last week, I talked about this love for other people. And next week, Scott's going to talk about love for yourself. And today, I have the wonderful privilege of talking about love for God's church. Love for God's church. What would it look like for us if we hit the reset button on our love for God's church? Whether you're joining us online or in person, my hope is that by the end of today, we're going to ask three clarifying questions that you can answer yourself and understand that you can have a love for God's church as well. Now, I grew up, I loved the church long before I loved Jesus. And that might sound hypocritical to some of you, that might sound crazy to some of you, but for me, growing up in a little church in central Nebraska, there was something about this place. It's where I found friends, it's where I found uh, relationships, it's where I found true acceptance, it's where I found fun. I I found absolute fun at this church called Valley Christian Church in North Platte, Nebraska. It was this church for me where for the first time in my life, I really felt accepted and loved to the point that I loved the church long before I love Jesus. And now to set today up, I want to kind of set it up in in a specific way. I haven't spent a lot of time preparing this message because obviously I found out that I'm preaching this message on Friday night. So I haven't spent a ton of time on it, but um, here's what I've been spending my time on. Maybe you have too. Bernie memes? (laughs) Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, I've spent a ton of, so since Friday night, that's all I've been doing. And so um, I don't know where we're going today. So in case you're curious, I have no idea where, in fact, I've got some pictures I'd love to show with you. So those of you joining us here at Bellevue South, uh, well, check this out. Those of you joining us at Bellevue South, there's Bernie right there. <laughs> we saved Bernie a seat. Uh, I love that, like, that might actually be somebody's seat. And they're like, you took my seat. Uh, okay, uh, Bellevue North. Let's, let's see Bellevue North real quick. There's Bernie. Okay, you guys see him? All right, those of you joining us at Shadow Lake, let's see where Bernie is at Shadow Lake. All right, that's where I usually sit when I go to Shadow Lake. Uh, and then he's also joining us online, in case you were curious. He's joining us online. He's watching Luke and Melissa. It's, it's a good time, right? 
So what I'd like to do the rest of the day is I'd like to show you my 22 favorite Bernie memes and apply them <laughs> to the church. Some of you are like, this is going to be the greatest service I've ever had. <laughs> Here's my fear, is that that might have been the most fun you've had in church in your entire life. And my hope and my prayer and my goal and my desire for us today is for us to realize and recognize that God designed the church for us to have fun together, for us to be united together, for us to grow together, for us to be together. See the theme there? Together. That there's something about us being together, whether it's online or in person, there's something about us being together that makes a difference. And so today, what I want to do is I want to give us three quick ways that we can be together and grow together and they're the foundations of the church. And with that, I'm going to ask you some clarifying questions and we'll dive in. Cool? Cool. Number one, the purpose of the church is to bring praise to God. The purpose of the church is to bring praise to God. But that might be something we do. You see, when, when you praise something, everything changes. When you praise God, everything changes, especially our perspective. The psalmist says it this way in Psalm 34, verse 3. He says, come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name. What's that word, church? What's that word? Together. Let us exalt his name together. Another translation says this, magnify the Lord magnify the Lord. I think he's on to something. When you magnify something, it gets larger in your life, right? When you put the magnifying glass over that thing, it gets bigger. Oh, let me say it this way. As I magnify the name of Jesus, his presence gets bigger in my life. As I magnify the name of Jesus, as I, as I look at Jesus and magnify Jesus, his presence gets bigger in my life. And so my question for us today, church, is what are you magnifying? What is it that you're magnifying? Are you magnifying the problem or are you magnifying the solution? Are you magnifying the, the political unrest or are you magnifying Jesus? Are you magnifying your financial stress or are you magnifying Jesus? Are you magnifying your relational strife or are you magnifying Jesus? What you magnify grows in your life. And so my hope for us today, church, is, is together as a church, we would worship him and magnify him. That we would raise him up to the level that he is to magnify him so that he might be the focal point and the center point of our life. That if we could hit the reset button this year as we jump into 2021, we're, we're just a couple weeks into 2021, right? As we jump into this, if we hit the reset button to say, you know what, for the last few weeks, I've not been magnifying Jesus. I've been magnifying this and this and this and this. But I haven't been magnifying Jesus. And so church, can I just ask you today, what is it you're magnifying? Maybe for some of us, we can just stop right there. Maybe for some of us, we can stop right there and take communion and be like, you know what? That's enough for me. I just need to magnify Jesus. That's it. That's all I need to do right now. To hit the reset button on my life right now, it's simply to say all of this stuff doesn't matter. All of this stuff is out of my control. All this stuff is just a mess in light of who Jesus is. I just need to magnify him. I need to take the magnifying glass over him and over his word and over his grace and over his love so that it might grow deeper and bigger in my life. What are you magnifying? Do you have this mindset that God's gonna do something in your life? When you gather together in church, whether that's online or in person, when you gather together with other believers, are you saying, God, would you speak to me? Are you preparing your heart for what God's gonna say to you? As you're driving in the car, as you're logging on and getting things ready at your house, are you actually saying, God, would you speak to me? I'm willing, I'm ready, I'm listening, I'm ready to magnify you, I'm ready to bring praise to you because of who you are and what you've done? Or are you going through the motions? In 2021, as we hit the reset button on why we think God's church is important, why we think it's vital, why we think it's part of what we should hit the reset button on, my question, my hope, my goal is simply to say, what are you magnifying? Are you magnifying him or are you magnifying other things? The second reason the church is important is to be disciples. It's to be disciples, to be followers of him. Psalm 92 verse 12 says this, but the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. Now, this word flourish, let's just talk about it for a second. Anybody know what this word flourish means? Anybody know? 
Anybody know? Let, let's imagine for a second, okay? Let's imagine for a second that tomorrow, uh, mind you, the, the nine inches of snow is just not gonna happen tomorrow, okay? We live in Nebraska, and so if they say nine inches, it's gonna be 70 and sunny. That's just what's gonna happen. <laughs> but let's say tomorrow, you, you decide you're gonna get up and you're gonna go to the gym. Here's what I'd like you to do tomorrow at the gym. I'd like you to find the biggest dude at the gym. The dude who is, you know, who is on the bench and they're just, they've got plates everywhere or the person on the squat rack who's going nuts or the person with the dumbbells who's grunting as they've got the dumbbells. I'd like you to go to that person tomorrow and I'd like you to look them right in the eye as they're lifting, okay? So on the bench press, they're laying down. You just do one of these right here. I'll look them right in the eye, okay? Right in the eye and I'd like you to say these words to them. Dude, you are flourishing, that's not a word we use, right? It's not a word we use, but let me explain what flourishing means. You probably get punched in the face. Let me explain what flourishing means. It means thriving. It means growing. It means being a blessing. It means having spiritual growth. And I want you to catch what it says. The godly will flourish. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord is what another translation says. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord, those who are godly, and unfortunately, many of us, if we were to use this language, it wouldn't be this word flourish. It might be the opposite of this. Instead of saying I'm spiritually flourishing, you might say, honestly, I'm spiritually dry. Instead of saying I'm thriving emotionally, you might say I'm emotionally withering. Instead of saying I'm connected relationally, you might say that I'm relationally broken. Instead of saying I'm prospering financially, you might say that I'm financially hurting, I'm restrained, I'm flat out broke. Instead of saying I'm, I'm fulfilled spiritually, making a difference, full of joy, so many people might say, you know what, I'm still searching, I'm still hoping, I'm still longing for uh, that thing, that something, that buzz, that relationship, that job, that whatever it is, that void in my life, I'm not flourishing. See, when your faith is wavering, when your faith is tired, when you're discouraged, when you feel defeated, the writer of Hebrews says something that I want to hone in on. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, there's a theme here. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting, what's that word? Together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his returning is drawing near. Being together matters, church. Being together matters. And so if your faith is wavering, if you could say, you know what, I'm not flourishing. In fact, I'm spiritually dry. I'm relationally not connected. I'm not with other people. If your faith is wavering, it's the absence of one of two things. The obedience of God's word or the encouragement of God's people. The obedience of God's word or the encouragement of God's people. If your faith is wavering, I believe that it's one of those two things that don't match up for you. Let me give you a scenario, okay? Quick scenario. Person A and person B. Person A comes to church or they log on to church. And they arrive and they log on and they hear a song that kind of speaks to them. They say, I didn't know that song would speak to me. And they hear somebody get up and they, they preach about God's love and God's grace and God's mercy. And they find this void in their life being filled as they hear about this love of Jesus. And they say, you know what? I, I could fall in love with Jesus because he loves me and he died for me. And so therefore I'm going to fall in love with him. And they turn their life over to Jesus. And they keep coming, or they keep logging on, but they never actually get engaged with other people. They never actually talk to other people. They never get in serving. They never start giving. They never actually spend time with the people of the church. And then you know what happens? Life happens. Crisis happens. And because they're not connected with other people, they just begin to fall away. It happens all the time. That's person A. Person B, same deal. Comes to church, hears a song, and says, you know what? That song connected with me. Or they hear a message and that message connected with them and they fall in love with Jesus and they turn their life over to Jesus. But you know what they do? Instead of person A, they begin connecting with other people. They spend time in a small group with other people. They start serving with other people. They sit in community with other people. They start talking with other people, praying with other people. People start praying for them. And then you know what happens? Life happens. But the difference is they're connected. And when the storms of life hit, they're rooted in the people of God and they can flourish. See, the church, the church is not just a building. There's a big difference between a building and being planted in the house of God. And so if you're a follower of Christ, I just want to say it's time. It's time for you to get planted in the house of God, to flourish, 
Do you really think that you can fight off, God, uh, fight off Satan's temptation by logging on or attending once a month? Do you really think that you can spend more time on Instagram than serving other people and be more and more like Jesus? It's time, church. It's time for us to be planted in the house of God. And I mean this. If you're someone who says, you know what, I haven't, I've tried Calvary and it just hasn't really worked out for me, let me say this. We have relationships with a number of churches in the Omaha area and we'd love to connect you with one. Maybe you say, you know what, I want a, a church that worships more free-flowing. We'll find one for you. You say, you know what, I want a preacher who is more boring than you. We'll find one for you. They're everywhere. <laughs> I'm kidding. We'll find people for you. We'll find churches for you. We want you. What God wants for you is you be planted in the house of the Lord so you can flourish. And so the question, the clarifying question for you today is this, are you flourishing? If you can hit the reset button, as you look at this new year, this new focus, are you flourishing? Are you living? Are you planted in the house of the Lord? Are you flourishing with other people? Are you saying, you know what? I'm spiritually dry. I'm relationally unconnected. Let me give you a quick way you can get to flourish this year. Sign up for Rooted. Calvary.ch slash Rooted. Sign up. You want to know how you can flourish this year? That's how you flourish this year. Third reason, third thing, is to make disciples. To make disciples. I heard about this dentist that was taking this lifetime trip. He was taking this lifetime trip. He'd spent, saved up all of his money to go on this one trip to Granada in Spain. Beautiful, beautiful place. He got everything ready. He, he, got, he booked his, his trip. He booked his tours. He booked his planes. He booked his trains. All the things he needed so that he could get around in Spain. And he got on a flight and he flew from America to London. And then he was surprised when he flew over the Atlantic again. And he landed in his destination, not Granada in Spain, but Grenada in the Caribbean. Two very different places. And that's a miscommunication with you and the booking person, isn't it? It's a change of one letter, but to get to very different places. Check this out. Check out the difference between the two. 4,000 miles. One letter changes the entire destination. In his book, Atomic Habits, James Clear says that if an airplane nose took off the West Coast three inches off, it's the difference between New York City and Washington, D.C. I tell you that to tell you this. We want to go somewhere on purpose here at Calvary. We want to go somewhere on purpose. See, I have all sorts of desires about people, what, what people might say about Calvary. People who know nothing about Jesus, know nothing about this church. The people of Omaha might say about this place. They might look from a distance and say, you know what? That's where families go to get better. The people who knew nothing about Jesus and nothing about church would look at our church, look at our organization, look at our building, look at our people and say, you know what? That's where you're going to find the best friends of your life. I hope that people would say this in our streets, in our cities, in our neighborhoods that we find ourselves in, that those that know what Calvary is and who Calvary is might say, you know what? It's where you're going to go to make your family better. Your kids are going to love it. Your students are going to love it. There's going to be some incredible things that happen in your life. Your best, you're going to find your best friends there if, if, if you're willing to hear about Jesus all the time. That that would be our reputation. That we aren't quiet about Jesus because he is who we should point our lives towards. He's who our lives should be directed towards. I love what God is doing here. Don't hear me wrong. I love the way he's moving people's lives. I love that we're about second chances. I love that we're a relational church. I love that we don't stand over people in judgment, but we extend grace and love and mercy to people. I love that we take God's word seriously. I love that we lift the name of Jesus high and hold his name high. I love our vision to make disciples who live and love like Jesus. It's the filter by which we do everything around here. Does it help people live and love like Jesus? And here's why that's important. Because it's easy to become a church about here. God brought me here. God placed these people here. God led us to this place where we are now. God brought me out of sin and darkness and addiction, and he forgave me and gave me a fresh start. And a lot of churches, if they're not careful, take all of their energy and focus on here, taking care of those that are here, loving those that are here, keeping those that are here, serving those that are here. But I believe that if you study God's word long enough, 
the heart of God, the heartbeat of God, the eyes of God, the passion of God, the longing of God isn't simply for those that are here, but rather those that are there. Here versus there. One letter changes the destination. Just like Grenada and Granada, one letter changes the destination. That those who are still far from God, those who are hurting, those who have yet to experience the same forgiveness that many of us have, you change one letter, you end up in Granada instead of Grenada. In the same way, you change one letter about the church and we talk about all that's here and we miss out on all that's out there. Totally different destination. We want to be a church that cares and understands about the people who are out there who need to hear the love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus. See, it'd be easy, church, wouldn't it, to sit back and go, look at all we've done. Look at all that we've accomplished. Look what God's done here at Calvary. Look how he's moving. And it'd be easy to sit back and pat ourselves on the back. But what I believe about God is that God is looking at the streets in our cities, the neighborhoods that we find ourselves in, and he's looking at the pain of people's lives, and he's saying, what about these people out there? What about these people out there? See, that's why we're part of a church. We're in need of a savior. See, we believe that the gospel is for everybody. Every single person on the face of the earth, the gospel is for them. That everybody's invited and everybody gets in the exact same way and everybody meets the requirements. And so if you're here today or if you're online today and you're saying, you know what, I just don't measure up, guess what? None of us do. Not a single one of us do. All of us are in need of God's grace and God's mercy and God's love. It's for the people who have questions about church. It's for the people who have questions about the Bible. It's for the people who have bad experiences in church. It's for the people who don't know how to act in church. We wanna create a space and a place together where everybody gets to belong and everybody gets to hear the gospel of Jesus. And so your action step this week is simple. Be the church. Be the church at school. Be the church in your neighborhood. See, I love what Jesus said. He said, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Don't you love the fact that he wants us to be so aggressive that we're literally rescuing people from hell? And so the action step, like I said, is simple. Be the church. You guys remember the game Simon Says? Remember that game? Where Simon says something and you do it? And there was never any question about it, right? When Simon says something, you just do it. If Simon says, pat your head, you just pat your head. If Simon says, rub your belly, you just rub your belly. If Simon says, do them both, I never could. But if Simon says it, you tried it. See, God's word is pretty clear. God's word says, go and tell others. And far too often, we don't play Simon says with God. Far too often, we do the opposite of that. We say, you know what, I'm gonna sit in a small group and I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna make sure I understand it. I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna grow and I'm gonna spend time memorizing it. And all that's fine and good and dandy. But maybe, just maybe, church, when God said go and tell others, we just needed to play Simon Says and do it and do it. I have a window frame in my office. It's one of my favorite things in my entire office. My mom made it for me. And on it is a scripture. It's my life verse. It says this. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. You know what that work is? Telling others. It's about being a disciple and making a disciple. That's what it's all about. That's why we gather together as a church to magnify the name of Jesus to be disciples, to, to know how to live and love like him and to teach others how to live and love like him. See, in just a second, we're gonna move into this time of communion. And before you grab it, don't grab it yet. We're gonna move into this time of communion. And here's what I'd love for you to do. As you take the bread and as you take the juice today, I'd like you to think about those three questions. What am I magnifying? What is the thing that you're elevating what are you magnifying? What are the things that you've got, you're so focused in on? And how do you turn that to Jesus? And so today, that might be the thing that you focus on as you take communion. How do I bring my focus? How do I bring my attention? How do I bring everything back where it needs to be on Jesus? 
Maybe today as you take the bread and the juice, you can just ask yourself that question. Am I flourishing? Am I growing? Am I thriving? Am I spending time with him so that I can grow in him with other people? Maybe today as you take the bread and the juice, that can be a reminder for you to to ask that question. Am I flourishing? Or maybe the question for you today is this. Is is my life in the right direction? Am I pointing people in the right direction? The way that I live, the way that I talk, the way that I do business, the way that I'm in my neighborhood, my school, my ball club, wherever you find yourself, the sphere of influence that God has placed you in, are you pointing people in his direction? And if not, why not? And so today, as you take the bread and as you take the juice, it's just some time with you and God. Just some time with you and him to have some self-reflection. What am I magnifying? Am I flourishing? And is my life leading people towards Jesus? I'm gonna give you a moment. Let you begin to work that through you and your heavenly father. And when you're ready, you can take the bread and the juice. I'm gonna pray. We'll do that. Father God, I thank you. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. And God, I pray specifically for individuals right now who just need to do business with you. They just need to ask the questions. What am I magnifying? Am I flourishing? And am I living a life that is pointing other people in your direction? God, allow this moment to not just be another moment in church, but allow it to be a reset button for so many of us that need to bring our focus and our attention back to you or need to find ways to flourish in you or need to point people in your direction. God, we love you. We thank you. It's your name that we pray. Amen. Remember where
sing that again. Sing Better 
Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today for Calvary Online. We hope that you were encouraged by what Ryan had to say. And honestly, just thank you for being a part of this online community. Thank you for helping others to live and love like Jesus and being a part of a community that's helping point other people to do the same. If you are new to Calvary, if this is your first time joining us, we're so glad that you were here with us today. We hope that you had a great time, but we would love to connect with you at calvary.ch slash guest. I know I said that at the beginning of the hour today, but that is really the best way for us to, to get to know you better and, and learn how we can serve you. Um, and thank you for partnering with Calvary through things like the one for one and just normal giving. Because of that, we're able to continue to push for the mission of the church and serve people all around the globe. And so thank you for partnering with us in that. And so if you felt led to give today, you can do that online or through your phone. But it is Rooted. Rooted starts next week. And you've probably been hearing about that if you've been here for a little bit. But Rooted is a small group experience that we're going to be starting next week. And we have online and in-person options available for you. So if you want to know more about that, go to calvary.ch slash rooted. It's going to be a phenomenal time. I'm really looking forward to it. So that's all we have for you today, church. We look forward to seeing you next week right here at Calvary.